Okay, I just had the conversation in the church with Dahlia. So, let's go get one of the secret items that was unlocked for this being our next playthrough. Just around the corner from the church here, there's a building that I missed on the first playthrough. But, when you go in the first time, there really isn't much to it. Pretty much about the only things you'd find are a safe point and one box of handgun ammo. However, on secondary playthroughs, behold! The gasoline tank! So let's have a look at that, shall we? The gasoline tank. Fuel for chainsaws and rock drills. <laughs> well, <laughs> that does make it fairly plain what it's for, doesn't it? <laughs> that is very specific fuel. So let's go find one of the tools in question, shall we? You have to make a choice the first time because you can only use the gas tank on one of the two items in question, either the rock drill or the chainsaw. Between the two, I prefer the rock drill. Did miss a couple of items here on my first playthrough. So, yes. Where's the rock drill, you might be wondering? It's here, under the drawbridge control room. Once you get in here, you have to manually turn on the flashlight to see anything. And we find a rock drill. But there's no gasoline, so we can't use it. But we can fix that quickly enough. And thus, we have the rock drill. It's a tool used in road construction to create holes in the road for poles. That sounds promising. Now here's the thing to keep in mind, though, with the power tool type weapons, is first, you have to get it started. Also worth noting, the power tool type weapons, they work a little bit differently. They constantly run, so they do constant damage as long as they're in contact with an enemy. But with the rock drill, you cannot move while using it. Holding up and down aims it. Now, using that, you can actually hit air screamers if you time it just right. It also helps to know where they're coming from. Yeah, just keep doing that. Oh, dear gods! Um... Are you kidding me? Ah! I hate hard mode! Run! Oh, I didn't turn the bridge on. Oh, gods! Get me out of here! Ah! <laughs> Okay, that's just ridiculous enough, I'm keeping it. <laughs> now, we'll see the real benefits of the rock drill soon enough, but just so you can't say I didn't warn you, it I still wouldn't really recommend using it against the rompers. Sometimes you can get lucky, but uh, chances are you are still likely to get mauled at least once. No means no, romper. So yeah, there's better ways to deal with rompers. Not the least of which is just still ignoring them. Like most of the exterior enemies, there's just really no reason to have to go after them for the most part. Now, there is one enemy that is rather susceptible to this. Rather nicely susceptible, in fact. And that's the Grono. If you can get the angle just right, you don't even have to do anything. Just let it jump into you. And that's it. You didn't even have to attack. Just hold the rock drill up and let it do the work. So that's kind of fun. So one very, very nice thing about the rock drill is it's like the ultimate deterrent against the hospital staff. 
It has a bit of a pushback to it, so it drives enemies back as it damages them. So, with the puppet nurses and doctors, they can't even get close enough to stab you with this thing. Killing spree! Right, so as anyone would have to expect with something that effective, there have to be drawbacks, right? Indeed there are. For one thing, it's pretty focused, so it's not all that great in a crowd. However, the main thing to note is that this and all special weapons, which would mean the rock drill, chainsaw, unfortunately the katana, and also unfortunately the hyperblaster, all decrease your rank. So if you use any of the hidden weapons during the game, your end rank is going to suffer greatly. These are mainly just to make extra playthroughs more fun, really. And they do a bloody good job of it. So you go down to the other church and you find yourself a nice big axe. Great weapon choice, right? Don't be too sure. But I didn't demo it in the first playthrough, so let's do this. It doesn't help that the first thing I have to demo it against are rompers. The thing is, the axe really doesn't have much in the way of st stopping power. It's kind of weird. It's like there are two classes of melee weapons. You have things like the knife and the axe, which offer good speed and mobility, but don't have much in the way of stopping power or strength in general. I mean, yeah, you can kill things with it, but by the time you have the axe, you really have better options. I mean, you have the hammer. That's the other class of melee weapons, things like the pipe and the hammer. I'll run and talk at the same time here. The... The pipe and the hammer... They... T they sacrifice speed and mobility, but they have a lot more stopping power and a lot more strength in general, really. So, yeah, it's kind of a choice of how you want to play. Do you want to kill things fast, or do you want to be fast yourself? Because the pipe and the hammer... Their drawback is they do leave you open longer because it takes longer to wind up the attacks. But you can sometimes stun the enemy with them to give you just that extra little bit of time you need. So, yeah, the thing is, honestly, I feel like what they should have done is switch the locations of the axe and the hammer. The hammer should have been in the other church. The axe should have been in the hospital basement. Not that the location makes sense, mind, but just that by the time you get the axe... There's really no need for it. The hammer just kind of answers all your melee needs, really. Range, power, stopping strength. So, yeah, by the time you get the axe, there just really isn't any need for it. Poor thing. Yeah, you remember the chained-up gate that leads to the sewer? Right about here? Why wait for a slower melee weapon? Rock drill! That's effective. <laughs> 